So everything just changed with this new mid-journey killer that I can't even do that. No, nothing changed, uh, but Ideogram did release a 2.0 update and it is pretty fantastic. Today, we're gonna dive into the new Ideogram to see where it's really shining and uh, you know, to be honest, where it's still lacking. I also do have some mid-journey news today. It is not dead, it is still quite alive and doing well and a really cool prompt generator for you to check out as well. Okay, let's dive in. So kicking off with Ideogram, who, if you aren't aware, is an AI image generation platform. It's been kicking around for a little while. I'd say its real claim to fame has always been how it handles text and design. Uh, in particular, text. It was really the first model out there that managed to get correct text. But with this new 2.0 update, Ideogram really seems to have kicked it up in the photorealistic department. Uh, so let's kick off with our channel mascot, the man in the blue business suit. So with the new Ideogram, we obviously have our prompt box, uh, some selections in terms of what we want the overall look to be, sort of presets. We'll take a look through each of these in just a little bit. Um, once again, we have a magic prompt over here. As I mentioned in yesterday's Mystic video, the magic prompt slider very much seems to be a standard feature these days. Uh, I like what Ideogram's doing here with it. We'll take a look at that in one second. Uh, but right underneath magic prompt, we obviously have our aspect ratios, standard aspect ratios for portrait, and on the right, standard aspect ratios for landscape. We do have the ability to do custom uh, aspect ratios as well. So thanks for that ideogram. One interesting addition as well is this color palette. We'll explore that in a little bit. But for now, let's uh, let's run our man in the blue business suit and see what we get. And after a few moments, we have four images of our guy. Yeah, I do think that these are pretty solid. Uh, I do appreciate the fact that he just looks like a normal dude. Uh, running this test, we have definitely seen a lot of like smiling supermodels uh, looking at the camera. I don't know, this guy, might have a side gig doing some modeling. I mean, look at those frosted tips. Taking a closer look, overall, I'm pretty impressed. Uh, there's a lot of background details here. Now, granted, that is being helped by the shallower depth of field, but still, I don't see anybody like sprouting an extra arm back there or anything. As we punch into about 300 to 400%, the, yeah, I mean, everything looks pretty decent. There is a little bit of wonk in the eye right here, but man, maybe that's just how he looks. Uh, skin tones look really good though. Textures on the suit look really decent. Uh, a little bit of jagging here, but we do have upscaling. To issue an upscale, you simply hit this button. Uh, you do actually have the option to reprompt within your upscale as well. We'll explore that in a little bit. Um, and then you have sliders for the overall resemblance of your image and then the detail on your image as well. Let's just crank that one all the way up. Uh, let's upscale this and see what we get. So our upscale more or less looks the same. I do note that his hair color changed a little bit, but uh, yeah, skin textures look really good. Uh, eyeball fixed, kind of. Uh, still looks a little bit on the wonky side. So we're at 300% on the zoom in now. Uh, we can get up to 400 to 500% and the image is still holding together. And the tie is actually still fairly smooth as well. So uh, yeah, well done, Ideogram. Now, one thing that people might be wondering is like, is this flux? Here's an AI generated image of a golden retriever as I answer that question? I, I actually don't know, but I tend to think no. I, I think that this is Ideogram's own model. Uh, I know ever since Flux came out, we, yeah, we're like seeing Flux everywhere. In fact, just as I was making this video, it was announced that Kriya is now using Flux. I'm not gonna get into a big prompt shootout between Flux and Ideogram. I'll let some other channels do that. Um, in the meantime, again, here's another golden retriever. I'm glad he's AI generated. Otherwise this black shirt would be just covered in golden retriever hair. Moving on to our various preset sliders here. Uh, the prompt that we're gonna try out is a barbarian standing next to a lake in a quiet moment. You know, we all need a quiet moment from time to time. So uh, under realistic, we get this. And I mean, yeah, sure. We got our barbarian here standing next to a very idyllic lake. Uh, our guy definitely does not miss leg day. Uh, so now let's try that out under under the, let's try design. So design gives us obviously very designy, kind of almost like their illustrator-y generated uh, images. Um, yeah, decent. Um, don't mind them. I did get one that was just a straight up photograph as well. Uh, not sure what exactly glitched there. But uh, yeah, this is the overall style that you'll probably end up with. 3D gives us a obviously, you know, 3D computer generated kind of style. So let's generate this up. Overall, I wasn't actually super impressed with this. The character model itself looks okay. The background just looks really pretty bland in all honesty. Uh, this was for almost all four of them too. Um, yeah, just like this looks very, I don't know, like 2008 World of Warcrafty. Um, yeah, so not overly thrilled with this. I 
did re-prompt it though, just because I, I mean I felt that this might have just been a bum generation. So running the prompt, a video game about a barbarian fighting a dinosaur, because why not? Uh, action scene modern game gives us images like this, which do look a lot better. Uh, we even got a fire breathing dinosaur. Heading back to our quiet lake with the anime preset gives us looks like this. For the most part, this is kind of the look that I've found uh, Ideogram to have under the anime preset, which is very much a, I don't know, I guess like late 90s, early 2000s uh, kind of anime vibe. I mean, to me, I think it looks pretty cool, but I know obviously there is a lot of like stylistic variation within anime and it does feel like Ideogram is kind of leaning into this particular style. So, it, you know, if you're looking for specific uh, anime styles, maybe look to Mid Journey's Niji. Rounding out on our Barbarian, just to show off how the color palette works. Um, yeah, this is actually a really cool feature. You can essentially choose the overall you know, color palette of your image. So let's uh, check this out under Ember and see what we get. We end up with these four images, which, you know, to be honest, I don't love, but again, this might not have been the right prompt for that color palette. Uh, these two are probably the most possible. It kind of has that sort of Michael Bay lens filter look to it. So to be fair, I did try it again with the jungle color palette and we ended up with these images, which aesthetically do look a lot better, except for the fact that number two here very much seems like he's in an Irish spring commercial. A few more photographic examples. This is a group of teenagers hanging out in the mall in the 90s. He's no good teenagers. Look at this guy standing in front of the escalator. I mean, he's up to no good. Here is a concert photo of a rock star playing a guitar at Wembley Arena in 1977. Uh, overall, yeah, no, I think that's pretty good. Obviously, I get very picky about guitars for obvious reasons. Uh, but yeah, that, you know, it looks like a Les Paul. A little on the small side, or maybe he is a giant. From a photographic standpoint, it definitely has that you know, color tone and palette that you would get from a 70s rock show. Uh, a lot of decent amount of grain on the photo as well. Staying with the music theme, we are still struggling on piano. Uh, the actual order of black keys is supposed to go two, three, two. Um, obviously is not doing that here. Uh, fingers do look pretty solid though. So uh, yeah, decent enough. Although on another generation, I did end up with this young man being accompanied by Thing from the Adams Family, and that is cheating. But again, Ideogram's real superpower has always been its ability to handle text. And as we combine that with the new image model, we can end up with some pretty cool stuff. So uh, generating up a YouTube thumbnail of an AI expert excitedly showing off a new AI image generator. Uh, the text says everything just changed with this mid journey killer. Yeah, I, I'm still debating whether I'm going to use this for the thumbnail or not. If you saw it, uh, I went through with it. One thing that I have noticed is Ideogram does have this tendency to pick up on weird keywords like having, you know, the YouTube play button here or in an alternate where I just told it to give me the text Ideogram 2.0 crushes it. And, you know, obviously we are still getting the YouTube logo up here. So ultimately my work around for that was just removing the word YouTube and just saying an eye-catching thumbnail. That did seem to do the trick. I did want to see how Ideogram would handle older prompts. So uh, going all the way back to the first time I looked at Ideogram, the game that I was playing at the time was a game called Alan Wake. So I had Ideogram create a fictional novelization of that game. The game actually is about a novelist, so it kind of ties in. Uh, and for some reason, Ideogram just hallucinated that the book was written by Donka Mindy, which I, I find endlessly hilarious for some reason. Uh, and that has becoming a running gag. So uh, taking this prompt and bringing it back over to Ideogram 2.0, we end up with something like this, where I was even able to further things along by giving it a fictional Stephen King quote of, I've never read this book. That did take a number of roles, and I would end up with a lot of generations that actually had aspects of the prompt written into the image. One of my favorites being this one, which has a cover, Alan Wake, written by Don Mindy, with the quote, I've never read this book. Now, I will say there is an editor that is built into Ideogram. Uh, it just doesn't really work quite the way that you might necessarily want it to. Um, you know, you would think that you could kind of in paint here and then reprompt. That's actually not how it works. Um, it'll more or less reprompt the entire image, ignoring that part. So if you do end up with something that you really like, uh, I might recommend just taking this and bringing it into something like Photoshop and doing like, you know, some gen remove on it. That said, you can usually get what you're looking for after a few re-rolls. It does do a really good job with placing text into an image as I did here with um, our theoretically media branded t-shirts. I don't actually have 
t-shirts um at a fashion show um these this this one in particular she's really unhappy to be wearing my swag but it really does come up with some pretty cool stuff like our t-shirt series here which once again does not exist of uh our man in the blue business suit and at one point it even got a little sassy with me uh generating up this image with a caption that i did not write and briefly before moving on to a community showcase, I did want to point out that Ideogram seems to be okay with famous faces to some degree. I did try to prompt out for a VHS copy of my fictional Bruce Lee Terminator movie. Uh, and yeah, we don't actually end up getting Bruce Lee, which is fine. It did end up generating out this like sort of illustrated kind of like Mondo inspired version, which I actually really like a lot. But one interesting thing that I kept noticing on the three quarter box art is that uh, down in the corner, it would say DVD all the time. Not sure what's going on there. Now, one place that I think that Ideogram really flies is in infographics as Tidora P shows off here uh, the benefits of working remotely. Now there is a pretty good chance you will end up with gibberish text as it tries to generate more as artificial quotient points out here uh, with this benefits of I guess it's a healthy diet where we have like uh, willy meum um, and you should get 10.2% uh, was that tecorit tecorit uh, of that. So this might be kind of more of a thing where you're just using this as a template image and then uh, going in with Photoshop or Illustrator and then switching out the text. But but there are definitely some really cool things that you can do like Christopher Fry put together like this animated looping thing for a uh, Cthulhu website um, by taking a ideogram output and running it through Luma Labs 1.5 and again I continue to be really impressed with how ideogram 2.0 uh, integrates text into images take for example this image by Casa Drapanis which I consider a personal attack on me uh, you know the neon writing here writing is part of the process not something cobbled together at the deadline no, the deadline is still early. You've got like 20 minutes after that before you need to hand it in. Uh, what I really like about like an image like this though is the fact that you can really you could see like the neon reflection here and even on this side of the wall, which really helps sell it as you know being part of the image and not text comped on top. And apparently you can even get away with some corporate logos, at least for right now, as Offworld Andre found with uh, this Aldi fashion show. Uh, Aldi being a chain grocery store, if you're not aware, who I just discovered owns Trader Joe's. Overall, I do think that the Ideogram 2.0 model is pretty solid. There are some areas that I do feel it's lacking. For one, imagination for example this wizard holding a crystal ball all technically accurate i think technically accurate wait one two three four five six nope not technically accurate relatively uh technically accurate um but you know just kind of lacks a little like zest surreal astronaut in an illustrated style standing on a alien planet yeah i mean it, it got it it just you know it doesn't really do a lot for me and in terms of its illustrative styles it looks fine but you know it's still it's it's lacking a little something to me that said as I always say that's okay because uh, what it really is great at is text uh, but just giving that look a shot so we have this image of a woman in a blue dress standing next to a wolf as you do um, we're gonna hit the remix button here and change out the prompt to an illustration in a comic book style of a woman with vibrant red hair yada 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 let's give this a roll and see what happens and we end up with these images, which I'm not going to bag on. I mean, I think that they're fine. Um, you know, this particular style is something that I, I personally might come back to at some point or another, but it just does feel a little bit uh, narrow. But again, as I've been echoing a lot on the channel, if that's not what Ideogram's strength is, that's okay because it does have other strengths like photorealism and text. Moving on to Midjourney news. The Midjourney website is now open to everyone. You don't need to generate uh, 20, 100, 1,000 images on Discord. You can just go to the Midjourney site and start generating. And in really good news, uh, if you've never used Midjourney before, trial versions are now back. It's currently 25 prompts that you can issue for the trial periods. It's basically 100 images. If you've never used Midjourney before, I mean, obviously on this channel, I have a ton of tutorials about it. I think I have a playlist somewhere down there. But if you have a relative handle on prompting, or even if you're a Midjourney expert, um, I mean, obviously there are a ton of commands that have built up into the Midjourney ecosystem over the last 6.1 versions. Um, there is this cool prompt built 
builder that I came across via my pal, uh, Wade McMaster from the channel Creator Impact. I'm not gonna go over the whole thing. Wade actually has an entire video to it. I'll have that linked down below. Um, but basically, yeah, uh, IMI prompt, which is totally free. You can donate via a coffee uh, cup down there. Um, you know, obviously you have two versions here. We're gonna hit the web version. Uh, you can start off with kind of whatever text you want. So let's do uh, a samurai uh, on a field. Hit the add text button, it appears here. And now you can start playing around with uh, the various perimeters here. And down here, we have just this bevy of different things to choose from. Everything from eras, uh, different digital art styles, photography, um, fashion, et cetera, et cetera. I mean, it just goes, it goes on and on. So, uh, and you can mix and match and blend all of this stuff together. Like I said, Wade has the full tutorial on it. It is linked down below. Uh, if you want, you can just hop over to the site that is also linked down below and just start playing around with it. So that's it for today. I thank you for watching. My name is Tim.